Chinese, the word dim sum literally means touching your heart. And today, I am going to touch hearts with a variety of dim sum delights. With all these colorful peppers I have here, I'm going to choose a couple. Then I'm going to show you how to do stuffed bell pepper with a seafood mousse. So you can do it tonight. I'm going to show you. We're going to pick up a couple of these and we'll do it. Of course, if you are very hungry, you can stuff a gigantic bell pepper. This will last you for three days. First, we are going to cut this up. Okay, we will cut this up. Okay, get rid of the seed because this is a nice sweet pepper. Not too hot. We will get rid of these. Okay, get rid of these. Get rid of these. I don't want anybody to see anything. <laughs> Marvelous, done. Or you can just use a spoon to kind of scrape it like this. Look at this, very simple. See this? Very easy to do. Just take it out like this. And then set it aside. Set it aside. And then the next thing I want to show you is we're going to get ready to make the shrimp mousse or the seafood mousse. Get ready a processor or you can do it by hand. I have some fish here. This is about a quarter pound of white fish. We'll cut into little chunks like this. Make it twice as big. One, two. Set it aside, put it together. One, two, three. And this way, you can put it in your food processor, just like this. And then the next one, I also want to put approximately a quarter of a pound of shrimp, shell and devein. Let's put the shrimp also right in here, OK? I hope everybody at home can see that right here. And then also, you know, I'm going to make it more interesting. We're going to put a lot of the other seasoning in there. All of these, egg white, soy sauce, sesame seed, and white pepper. Cut up some mushroom. OK. You want to make a lot of noise? No noise? Depends on your mood. And you put them all together, put it right here. In the meantime, we're going to put all the rest of the ingredients. One egg white. OK, look at this. Some sesame seed oil, one teaspoon, two to three tablespoons, up to one tablespoon of broth. It doesn't matter. Don't move do too much. Cornstarch, one teaspoon, and also a touch of white pepper. When it's all in there, all you have to do is do it like this. Look at this. You make it into a mousse. You start. Push the mousse button. Mousse, 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 mousse. Mousse, 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 mousse. Save some elbow grease. Otherwise, go. it takes three hours. When this is nice and done, all you have to do is do it like this. In the meantime, to save time, we are going to heat up this burner because we're going to do this by browning in the frying pan. The mousse, put it right here, OK? Look at this. One heaping spoon of mousse. Nice and smooth. Smooth and nice. Just don't let it go to your head. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at this. One big heaping tablespoon, OK? Now, of course, if you have this, you're going to have to have about 20 heaping tablespoons. <laughs> Make sure they're nice and smooth like this. Look at this. Very smooth. Smooth mousse. <laughs> Don't do it like this. This looks really ugly and ridiculous. Look at this. Don't do it like this. Sloppy. Sloppy mousse. <laughs> Make sure to put this over here, put this over here. Nice and smooth, OK? Then when it's done, you can even lightly touch it with a tiny bit of cornstarch. Now, set it aside. We can slightly brown this. Look at this. Make sure this is hot. And you put a tiny bit of oil over here. In this frying pan, you can do it in a wok, OK? And then you slightly coat this with cornstarch. It's not necessary.
Then you do it this way. One. Can you hear the sizzling sound? Can you hear bell? <laughs> My mother always thought that was funny. Okay, you brown this, you brown this. Use medium low because if you do it too much, outside will be burned and the inside is still raw. So you don't want that to happen. And then after that, you put a tiny, tiny bit of broth, okay, like this. About two or three tablespoons. Then cover up and let it steam. You know why? Because you want to cook it over low heat to make sure everything is cooked. In the meantime, you want to make sure you make a sauce to serve with the stuffed pepper with the shrimp mousse. Now here, look at all these ingredients I have. I have chicken broth, I have black or salted black beans, also called fermented black beans. Rinse it in water, crush it a little bit with your knife. See this? Crush it a little bit so to release the flavor. In the meantime, I'm gonna get this and put them all in here. Right here, the black bean, one teaspoon of this is chili, crushed chili. And also sugar. And also a tiny bit of dry sherry, two tablespoons. And also a tiny, tiny bit of broth. If you want to make it more interesting, you can add a tiny, tiny bit of shallot and also garlic and ginger, which all you have to do is mince. It depends on how much time you have, okay? This is shallot. And we're gonna use a tiny bit and I chop this up, and it go like that, and I go set it aside, okay? And then this is ginger, I, I done. And this garlic, I done. And garlic, I done. All of these are done. You put them all together, and then when it's bring to a boil, all you have to do is use a spatula or wooden spoon or chopstick. You stir this and thicken this up, okay? Doesn't take too long to do at all, okay? Make sure to thicken this up in this little sauce, okay? When it's done, I'll show you how to serve this, okay? One over here, and this is also done. We'll put this, oh, oh look at how beautiful. Look at how beautiful. This is absolutely marvelous. Look at this. When it's done, all you have to do is put the sauce right on top. You have bell pepper stuffed with seafood mousse. In many Chinese dim sum restaurants, steamed beef balls, very, very popular. It's the same if you use turkey. You make it with turkey when the cow is on vacation. So we're gonna make savory. Turkey balls. I hope at home you enjoy it, have just as much fun as I do. In this turkey ball, I'm gonna show you how easy it is. As I said, you can use pork, you can use beef, or you can use chicken. This is turkey, lean and much, much lower in calories is good for you. Here, I have dry tangerine peels right here. This is Dry tangerine beauty is how it looks. See that? Very aromatic. It gives a nice color, nice. This is give a little black, give a color contrast. But mostly, it's for flavor and taste. You gotta soak this in water. And then you chop this up into really small pieces. <laughs> Put them all over here in this turkey. And then, have some water chestnut. About half a cup or so, hey, done. You see that? How easy, all done. And then all you have to do, hey, done. And I put them all over here. We have some chop up already ahead of time. And we're gonna season this, marinate this with the following ingredient. Look at this, I have some oyster sauce. We're gonna put a tiny bit of oyster sauce here. About two tablespoons of oyster sauce, about a teaspoon of sesame seed oil, and also a tiny, tiny bit of chicken broth, about one tablespoon or so. And always remember, use cornstarch, okay? Use cornstarch, help to seal in the juice. When it's ready, you mix them all up. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to shape the turkey ball. In fact, when I was growing up, I remember, in our bed yard, we have a little tangerine tree. And I love tangerine, love fruits. Every time I want a snack, my mom tell, 
go climb a tree. <laughs> now, when this is all nice and ready, you're going to shape this, and I'll show you how easy it is to shape it to make a ball. OK, look. Let me show you. You put all of these here, and then you go squeeze one of these out. And then you have one ball right here, one ball. And then you squeeze another one out. And you squeeze it, and you have two balls. <laughs> and you can make a lot of balls. I am the handball champion in China. <laughs> one ball, one more ball. So you can continue to make all these balls. And then, of course, you should clean up and put over here, set it aside, because I have made enough balls. I don't have to worry about it. And when this is nice and done, you put it in a bamboo steamer with some of these, OK? This is a tea leaf, so the bamboo steamer, the ball will not touch the bamboo steamer, because it's right on top of here. Put one ball, two ball. It should be shaped like a little ping pong ball. This way, it will touch your heart lightly. If you shape into a gigantic ball, like this, <laughs> not only it will not touch your heart lightly, it will give you a heartburn. <laughs> Make sure to do that. Now, we are going to lift this up and put this right on top of these. And we're going to let it steam like this. The steam will shoot up right through this. That means you can steam many, many things at one time. That's why you go to Chinese restaurant, you see a lot of steamers stacking up. The next one I want to show you quickly is the chiu jiao dumpling. Chiu jiao dumpling is another very, very popular Chinese steam sum item. Chiu jiao is a little city, province, from Guangdong province, OK? Here, I have all these ingredients. Everybody take a look. I have some ground pork, dry shrimp, soaked up for half an hour, some seasoning, sesame seed oil, wine, uh, broth, ginger, and white pepper, and some cilantro and cornstarch. Mix them all up. Then you will have a filling like this. If you want to save time, you can actually cook this ahead of time. OK? Now I want to show you. The filling is all ready. You got to make the dough. We'll show you all of these to make the dough. Very, very easy to make the dough. This is very unique dough. You know why? Because we use wheat starch. Can everybody see that? Wheat starch. Dang min. OK? Wheat starch is derived from wheat flour. You wash the wheat flour, and you get rid of the gluten. What you have left is wheat starch, OK? Very easy to do. And you mix in this big bowl here, you make this dough. This dough requires this wheat starch, approximately one third of a cup of wheat starch, OK? And also, use about one tablespoon of cornstarch, OK? And you use boiling water. This water is boiling. <laughs> Mix them all up. You, you want to partially cook this, OK? Partially cook the starch. Mix them all up. Mix them all up until they're nice and well mixed. Then you incorporate it once they are nice and mixed. This is very hot, so you should let it. You never use your hand. You use a wooden spoon or chopstick to do it like this. And then you put some Crisco oil or lard or any shortening. OK, put it right here. Mix them all up. You set it aside, OK? Set it aside and cover up and let it sit there until they're nice and smooth. And then you have doughs like this. We have two lumps of dough. Cover it up, otherwise it will dry it out, OK? We'll just do one. And cover this up. Make sure good practice, OK? There are two ways of doing it. In Chinese restaurant, they use a knife to make a round circle. But here, we'll do it high tech. You make one ball, you make another ball this big, OK? If you have gigantic chiu jiao dumpling, you have big balls. <laughs> and then you put it over here. Make sure it's nice and round, OK? And then you open this up, put it over here. Look at this. All you have is a gigantic piece dough like this. Let's shape another dough. Marvelous. Look at this. And when this is done, all you have to do is use a spoon or a fork 
show you how to fold the dumpling, okay? You can fold it any way you want. It doesn't really make any difference, okay? Put it right here. Put it right here. Look at this. Can you see that? Everybody see that? You got to fold it very tight, okay? Otherwise, the filling will escape back to Chujiao. <laughs> push it. Push it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have a little dumpling like this. Can you see that? Isn't it cute? <laughs> and if you have time, you do another one. And after you do this, you put them all together and you steam them. And normally in Chinese restaurants, they put about two or three of these in a little bamboo steamer. Three is a good luck number. Four is not a good luck number in Chinese culture. So you always put three pieces. Three means sang, birth. Four in Chinese cultures, dead. So normally, in fact, there's no fourth floor in the building, okay? And you look at this, this is marvelous, look at this. We have two chiu jiu dumplings. And after that, you put in the steamer, and I want to show you how beautiful it looks when it's done. Here, we have my marvelous All you have is a savory turkey ball. And we also have the chiu jiao dumpling. Marvelous. <laughs> Dim sum is a very, very unique dining experience. So let's take a look at how they are made. Making dim sum for your families is an art. But making it for a room full of hungry customers is both an art and a science. In a busy dim sum kitchen, the staff has literally hundreds of mouths to feed each day. The dim sum makers work around the clock, creating a variety of Chinese delicacies. Making dim sum includes kneading the dough, flattening it out, putting the filling into the dough, and folding it up. Once the dim sum is wrapped, it goes through the cooking process. The most popular way to cook dim sum is to steam it. In a large Chinese kitchen, bamboo steamers are stacked high like a skyscraper so that large quantity of dim sum can be steamed at the same time. Another way to cook dim sum is to fry it. This is like a Chinese French fry. And don't forget about baking. Some of these dim sum treats are baked to a golden brown. Since freshness is so important in Chinese cuisine, freshly made dim sum was quickly transferred to carts and then taken out to the dining room right away. Part of the fun of eating dim sum is being able to pick up whatever you like right off the cart or off the Lazy Susan. But sometimes you have to be quick. For this reason, my favorite place for enjoying dim sum is always a table with the most food. To your health. Joke Lei Gin Hong. Now, wasn't all the dim sum delightful? Since I have some leftover wonton from last week, the next dish I'm going to show you is a dish created by my good friend Gladys Lee, the queen of wonton. She has 500 ways, different ways to make these sweet wonton. I'm going to show you. Here, I have some wonton wrappers. I always said you should cover up with moist towels, so I cover up so it won't dry up. In the meantime, we're gonna put all the fillings together. I have some sweet shredded coconut raisins. I have some chopped walnut. Use one portion of each. I have some sesame seed, white sesame seed, okay? Marvelous, roasted already. I have some black sesame seed, also roasted. Okay, and also some cinnamon powder. I put a tiny bit of these in, and also depends on how sweet you want it. You can use this much sugar, this much sugar, or more sugar, or more, or less, or less. <laughs> okay, and then you mix them all up like this. Mix them all in this bowl. Can you see that? Mix them all up. Then we're gonna make one ton. Gladys always say, she can custom design your one ton. I want to show you how to make one that it looks like this. 
put a tiny bit over here and use some water, put it right over here. Look at this, everybody see. Put some water right here. In the meantime, you get your oil ready. Look at this, one. Like this, you have a triangle. This is one kind, you can make one like this. This is number one. Gladys Lee's, one ton number one, okay? Next, you show, we show you another one that she has designed, just like a regular one ton. You put it over here, put some water on the other side, fold it up in a triangle, and then put some, a tiny, tiny bit of water at the corner right here, and then you fold it in like this, okay? Dim sum number two. Now, let's do another one. You put them right over here. Look at this. Can you see everybody? Can you see? Can you see closely? <laughs> Make sure you don't miss anything. I fold it like a little candy. Look at this. I roll it up like this. In the meantime, I tuck this in. I tuck this in. Make sure the darn thing won't come out. In the meantime, I use a tiny bit of water. I squeeze this like this. See this? Squeeze this. And I squeeze this with a, just a tiny bit of water. So it would stay like this. See? Can you see that? No two look alike. <laughs> you do not want to use too much hot oil. The oil is too hot, it will burn everything. We'll put this in. Can you see that? Nice and deep frying. Can you see that? Okay. If it's, give you an other example. If the oil is too hot, what are you going to do? This happens all the time. All you have to do is instead of turn the heat down, you just add some fresh oil. Here, I just struck oil. <laughs> use this uh, chopstick and also use this. This is a strainer, wire strainer. You use this to deep fry. Can you see that? When this temperature is right, it would not turn it golden brown too fast. And it cook, when you deep fry, it flows like a little pillow. You see that? It's kind of cute. And we put the whole thing in here. Okay? In the meantime, you can fool more one time while you're deep frying this. This is a cooking chopstick. It's long. Chopstick is supposed to be the extension of your arm. A lot of people always say, when I go to Chinese restaurant, how come in half an hour I'm hungry again? Because they always give you a little chopstick like this. Look at this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> okay? You try to reach the dish. You have six, seven dishes. You're lucky to be able to reach the dish right in front of you. Okay? You can never reach the dish on the other side of the table. That's the reason why you're hungry. So my recommendation, always carry one of these chopsticks around. OK? Look at the difference. OK? With this one, not only you can reach the dish in front of you, you can also reach the dish on the other side of the table. <laughs> ah, if you're still hungry, marvelous, you can reach another table. <laughs> ah, don't leave home without it. Marvelous. When this is nice and golden brown, you take it out because you do not want to wait. Can you see that? This is strainer. It's marvelous. You put it over here, put it over here. And this is so good that I am telling you, this is marvelous. Do not deep fry too much. After it's done, you should put it in a basket with a tiny, tiny bit of towel here so you can soak it so that would not be too greasy or too oily. When it's done, we will put them all over here. Oh, look at all this. We've got 600 people here. Put it right <laughs> over here, right over here, and right over here. Then you have all this beautiful one ton. I hope I have touched your heart today with all of these wonderful dim sum delight. Until next time, if Yen can cook, so can you. <laughs> Joy Gim!